So I just, yeah, I wanted to thank everyone for taking the time to join me today. Again, sorry about the uh, the problems there at the beginning. So over the next sort of half an hour, I'm going to be exploring some of the most common myths and objectives we hear regarding Google Ads and PPC. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll have um, you'll have a better understanding of um, some of the um, some of the challenges relating to PPC around your business and how to solve those. Um, and then there'll be an opportunity at the end to ask questions you have regarding PPC. Um, and we'll also be inviting you to in, uh, ask questions using the chat facilities throughout this. Um, so before we get into it, um, I just thought I'd introduce myself. Um, so here's a bit about me. So I've been working in PPC for more than five years. Um, of those six months I've been spent at Evo site where I oversee all of our paid ads clients. So I manage a range of clients across a range of industries and sectors, uh, typically across the e-commerce and the lead gen space. Um, and in total, I manage around £500,000 of PPC budget a year. So hopefully I can share some of that experience with you today um, and give you all something um, sort of valuable to take away. Um, so I'm sure many of you are familiar with PPC ads on Google and other search engines, but I just wanted to recap what they are before we get started, just so we're all clear. Um, so as the name suggests, Google Ads is Google Ads um, is Google's pay per click advertising platform. So providing advertisers the opportunity to manage PPC campaigns within Google's search results pages and its associated networks. Um, so ads can appear on other websites as well, and as well on uh, as well as on YouTube. Um, and just for clarity, really, it's formerly known as AdWords, which changed it rebranded to Google Ads in 2018. So it's still fairly common. Um, you might still hear it being referred to as, as AdWords still. Um, so I'll just quickly run through some of the main types of ads on Google, so we're all clear on what we're talking about um, when we talk about paid ads on, um, on Google. Um, so this example here, this shows um, a fairly typical Google search ad, which I'm sure we're all very familiar with. So we probably see these on a regular basis. So um, these um, are probably the most common form of PPC ads on Google, and these appear as text ads within the search results page. Um, so next up are display ads. Um, again, probably quite familiar with these and seen these across the internet when you're browsing the web. Um, these are great for retargeting people who have already been to your website, but also they're also great for uh, brand awareness as well. Um, so next we've got a uh, Google shopping ad. Again, probably seen these when you're searching for products online. Um, there are a number of places these can appear, but most typically um, at the top of uh, the Google search results pages. And again, within the Google search um, the Google Shopping tab as well. And then finally, YouTube ads. Um, so these can take many formats and forms, but the one I've highlighted here is a, use, is a YouTube masthead ad. Um, this basically allows advertisers to showcase their brand within the YouTube home feed. Um, yeah, so yeah, now we're all clear on, um, on the ad formats and what uh, Google Ads and PPC is, let's get started. Um, so probably one of the most common things we hear about PPC is that it's expensive or businesses are maybe put off because of the cost of running ads. Um, I think the reality is really that um, many people feel this way because they're yet to unlock any value from it or haven't seen any um, ROI. Um, so let's just explore this in a little bit more detail now. So uh, I think the first thing to say is there's no minimum budget to run ads on Google. So um, if you are if you are working to a modest budget, it's still possible to get results, but also run ads on Google. We would in fact suggest you start with a low budget if you if you are just getting started with Google Ads, and then scale as you begin to see results. Um, another thing to say is that Google, um, within Google Ads and do it by doing PPC, um, we would. Um, we would suggest sort of managing and capping budgets just to ensure that you are sticking to within your budget and 
as I say, you can even possibly start small with a single keyword or a few selected keywords and then scale and grow your account as you begin to see results. Um, so when it comes to budgeting for new PPC campaigns, there are a few things to consider. So the first thing we suggest is when running a new PPC campaign is just to set aside some additional budget for testing. Uh, this will allow you to identify what works before scaling ad spend. We'd also suggest adding negative keywords before your campaigns go live, um, just to ensure that you're not targeting any keywords which aren't relevant. Um, and then also, if you are working to a smaller budget, target long tail keywords. Um, so this will allow you to go after relevant traffic, but with typically lower cost per clicks. Um, so a few bit more things to mention around budget. So we'd suggest using the Google Keyword Planner. This will help um, to identify possible volumes and costs for your keywords. Um, we would also suggest using targeting and ad scheduling. Um, this will help um, prevent your ads from showing when you don't want them to. Um, and then use the settings within Google Ads to control the budget, things like bid caps, and setting daily budgets, these are a great way to ensure that you are, are not overspending on your campaigns. And then finally, um, make sure you're regularly reviewing your campaigns and budgets just to ensure that you are spending within the, um, the budget you've set for yourself. So another common objection we hear about PPC that is, uh, is that it doesn't work. Um, yeah, the reality here is that Google Ads and PPC can and does work for most businesses. It's just about unlocking that potential. So, um, yeah, let's explore that in a little bit more detail now. So I've included some stats here which highlight the potential of PPC when we consider the scale which people search on Google. It's also worth mentioning that the average ROAS for Google Shopping is uh, 5.18. So for every pound spend, spent, um, sorry, the average revenue returned is uh, £5.18. So Google Shopping, if you are an e-commerce business, is a great avenue to, um, to grow your business. Um, so certainly something to consider if you are selling products online. Um, and then finally, uh, even if you mainly operate offline, there's still potential to use Google Ads um, to get inquiries. So. Um, people still search online for local and offline businesses. So a great opportunity to generate inquiries via Google, even if you don't have a massive online presence. Um, so yeah, certainly something to consider if you are a service business. Um, uh, so a few things to consider when um, to sort of maximize your chances of success when doing Google Ads and PPC. So our first bit of advice here would be to, um, to ensure that you've got a well-defined goal and idea of what you want to achieve before you even plan any campaigns on Google. Um, next, so next, think about the KPIs and objectives. So, what, um, so what do you want to achieve, and what does what does success look like? Um, so, defining these goals will help you to decide um, kind of what um, what the types of campaigns you should be running as well. So that will help with planning. Uh, we would also suggest employing good campaign structure. So this will help um, to organize and manage your campaigns. Um, yeah, and we would also recommend um, regularly testing as much as you can within your account. So um, this will help you to constantly identify new opportunities and, and just ensure that you're constantly improving um, the results you're getting from your ads and the campaigns within them. Uh, and then finally, just to ensure that you are effectively using the targeting options available within Google. Um, this will just help ensure that you're reaching your specific um, desired audience and excluding people that you potentially don't want to reach or might not convert as well. Um, so another common myth we hear around PPC is that people do not click on ads or only choose to visit the organic or SEO links within Google. Um, so let's explore that in a little bit more detail now. 
Um, so again, I've included some stats here which highlight how effective PPC actually can be. So the um, the headline here really is that on average, a quarter of users choose to click on the paid links within Google. Um, so if we combine that with the stats from the previous um, section, then there is generally a good that's generally a good proportion of people who are um, looking for your products and services on each Google search. Um, so a few things to consider here, if you are having challenges with getting users to click on your ads, um, there are a number of suggestions here we would, um, we would suggest you um, consider. So first off, um, the relevance and user intent. So um, just ask yourself really how closely your ads relate to what your audience is looking for when searching. Um, and if, if you'll find a lot of the search terms are coming through as irrelevant, you can add these as negative keywords um, and then just control and manage your traffic that way. Um, next, we would suggest you regularly test ad copy, um, experiment with new ad formats. So testing variations um, tends to be the best way to improve your, your ad relevance and your click-through rate. Um, our next suggestion would be to ensure that you're taking users to the most appropriate area of your website. So um, just making sure that the landing pages you're taking users to is relates to the ads and their search inquiries. Um, this will also help with your quality score um, and also improve the overall user experience. And our final tip here would just be to make the most of ad extensions. So there's quite a few benefits in getting these right. Um, I think, I mean, the main thing to mention is these will help improve your ad relevance. Um, and help provide as much information as possible to your audience. So I'll just give you some examples of um, of ad extensions now to sort of um, to show you how powerful they can be. So yeah, include a few examples here. Um, I mean, these relate to various various different different businesses, um, and then obviously showcase different types of information. Um, I guess the main thing to say really here is that not only do they maximize your ads real estate um, on the results page, but they also provide um, extra information which can help with ad engagement, click through rates um, and make your ads more relevant. So the next thing we hear quite often is um, that people think that if they are doing well organically or have a good SEO strategy that they don't need to run PPC campaigns. I think the reality is um, that both SEO and PPC are really important to your online marketing, uh, but they tend to support different business outcomes. So um, let's explore this. Um, let's explore this a bit more now. So yeah, we would strongly recommend you doing both SEO and PPC to support different business outcomes. Um, so SEO is great for kind of the top of the funnel activity, brand awareness, while PPC tends to support um, the kind of um, the the kind of more um, later stage um, inquiry. So um, so toward so for things towards the end of the buy buying journey and. For, so things like purchases and conversions. Um, but yeah, there are, among, there are a number of benefits of having a well-planned SEO and PPC strategy working together, which we'll take a look at now. So whilst PPC is great for converting higher intent keywords, SEO is good for leading people to other information and in the lead up to a conversion, which I touched on before. Um, so this is especially important um, if you have a long sales cycle um, or a long consideration period before people make the final purchase. Um, PPC is great for testing and targeting new keywords, which you might not be able to do as much with SEO. So if you want to target new keywords organically, it can take a long time for your content to rank. But with PPC, you can target keywords uh, much quicker and it will also help you to supplement that gap in, P, um, in SEO traffic as well. Um, and the final benefit really of running organic and PPC campaigns simultaneously um, is that it gives you double the data. So 
This can help you determine um, which organic um, and PPC campaigns have the highest conversion rate. And then in turn, you can make sort of business decisions or marketing decisions around this um, and use that to optimize your overall keyword strategy. Um, so next up, another common objective we hear is that you need to have a lot of experience to run PPC campaigns. So while this to some extent can be true, there are a few things to, um, to bear in mind which might help you get started um, when setting up your own um, campaigns. So the first thing to mention here is um, anyone can set up and create an account within Google Ads. So you, you just need your business info to get started, as you would with creating any account, really. Um, um, and the next thing to say is Google do try and make it as simple as possible for um, everyone to run ads on their platform because it's in their interest. They want as many customers as possible. So um, there are some self-served options within Google, which are called smart campaigns. Um, and yeah, the, as I say, these are a great way to get started with with Google Ads um, and then scale um, as you grow and start to see results. So these are designed, these smart campaigns, they're designed to um, to be set up without any real, uh, without any knowledge of PPC really, and then they'll sort of guide you through the process. So although these are a great way of getting started, they don't kind of give you as much control as full campaigns. Um, so we'll go through a few considerations alongside that as well now. Um, so, yeah, so I think just the most important thing to remember is the time it takes to run and manage PPC campaigns. So they can be type, quite time consuming. Um, so it goes without saying really that getting results um, from Google Ads can be tricky if it's completely new to you. But in order to get results, we would, su we would sort of suggest you learn the Google platform, learn how to structure and optimize campaigns as well. Um, and that should sort of maximize your chances of, of seeing conversions from your campaigns. Um, another thing to consider here is just to be aware of Google's self-serve options. So smart campaigns, which I'd mentioned, um, these are driven by machine learning algorithms, um, which can and does have an increasing place in advertising now. But, um, but yeah, just being able to read the data and know your search campaigns are working can never really be replicated. So you do need some um, some human input here. Um, and also it's unlikely an algorithm will truly know kind of how your business works as well as you do. So yeah, always being able to um, to sort of keep an eye on those campaigns and read the read the data and information um, is, is important as well. Um, and then yeah, consider working with a Google Ads partner. So um, there are a number of there are a number of benefits um, for doing so. So um, so some of the Evo site, we're a Google Ads partner, so we have access to betas. Um, so brand new Google Ads features before they're rolled out to the public, we can we have access to turn those on for our clients. Um, and then we also have direct and regular access to Google Accounts Manager and support team. So any issues which uh, might be tricky to resolve we can we have direct contact con, uh, contact with google to sort of um, iron out some of those problems um, and we get more kind of transparency about upcoming features and google ads updates as well so um, a few benefits there um, to uh, consider when working with uh, if you uh, if you're struggling with your ads then we would suggest yeah finding a google ads partner who can sort of help I'd answer on those problems. Um, so that concludes the session today. So I uh, mean, after this, I'll share my contact details with you all um, in case you'd like to discuss anything further or have any questions. Um, I'm just going to see now if there's any questions that um, that have come in, and I'll answer those. Um, but if not, there'll be an opportunity afterwards. As I say, I'll share my contact details with you all um, and any questions or any feedback, then um, then I can answer those um, away from this session. So 
So first up, one of the questions that's been sent to us is around the messaging on your PPC ads. So um, the question asks, what would be around, what would be your advice around PPC messaging? Um, so yeah, my advice here would be to keep the messaging consistent with your brand as you would with any marketing or advertising. I think remember to include, um, uh, remember to sort of sell your business, um, remind them, remind customers of your USP and what sets you apart. So your ad might be appearing alongside up to up to three or four of your competitors. So it's really important to um, to sell your business there. Um, so you can try and get people to click on your ad over over your competitors. Um, and also remember to include a call to action. So um, direct people to, um, to take action. So whether that's buy now, uh, inquire today. Um, so just remind people what, what action you want them to take. Um, uh, yeah, we also regularly test your ad copy and your messaging. So. Um, so you can sort of decide what works for you as well. Um, yeah, so that would be my advice around the sort of messaging on your PPC ads. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully that answers that question. Uh, so final question um, we have was, uh, we have is around brand awareness for using Google Ads for brand awareness, basically. So, um, yeah, I mean, the first thing that springs to mind here would be to uh, to test Google display campaigns. So these are great for, for brand awareness and reaching brand new audiences, people who might not have heard of your business yet. Um, so I definitely recommend testing uh, Google display campaigns. Um, and then also within Google search, consider bidding on your own brand terms, um, but also be clever around kind of bidding on um, sort of search terms relating to your products and services, and maybe even closely relating to your competitors, but obviously approach that with caution because you don't want to get into a kind of bidding war of your, uh, with your competitors. But um, so yeah, try and be clever there around bidding on um, kind of terms sort of certainly around your products and services um, and definitely on your brand as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully hopefully that helps and answers that question. Um, just checking if we've got any more questions. Um, I think that's everything. So um, yeah, if we don't have any more questions, I'll, I'll wrap it up there again. Sorry for the delay at the beginning, everyone. Um, but yeah, I hope you found that session useful and um, that everyone's had something to take away with them today. Um, yeah, if you do have any more questions, then do get in touch and we'll be happy to um, to respond separately. Um, but yeah, again, thanks for joining us today. Um, and yeah, we hope you found that useful.